Welcome back to Pentiment. Our time's up. It is known Jacob has arrived and uh, we have no real evidence. We cannot accuse anybody. So I really fear for Piero, but we will try our best. I don't think anybody is talking to us anymore. Yeah, no chances. Well, here we go. Let's go through the forest. No, we don't, because that's not the way into the forest. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm nervous. I don't want Piero to die. It's horrible. So let's be prepared and before we go to the Abbey, he doesn't talk to us either, we will read our journal. That's the least we can do. So, what did we find out? The Archdeacon's investigation. The Baron's man, Mick Klaus, has departed for Innsbruck to request the presence of the most reverend Jacob Estler, Archdeacon of Freising. He's here now. He will be gathering evidence about the murder and interrogating those of us who might have information. Jacob Esler, the Archdeacon of Racing, has arrived at Kirsau Abbey and will be questioning people connected with the Baron's death. He wants to question me in the chapter house at Nones, which is now. We found nothing about the stonemason's anger. I should talk with Lucky to find out what he was arguing about with the Baron. He's usually working next to his house north of, t of the town commons. We could have followed him, but we did not. The Widow's Curse it was about Ottilia Kemperin, who cursed the Baron when we were walking through the meadow. I need to find out why she hated him so much. The Widow's house is next to Franz Bowers. I talked to the Widow Kemperin about Lawrence Rotvogel. Well, I tried to, but she only wanted to say that she was glad he died and hoped the abbot was next. I won't be able to get any more information out of her, unless I help her around the house, it seems. I found running Kemper's old cane at the widow's house. The head of the cane was missing and it looked like it had broken off recently. I should see if I can learn how it broke, but I don't think there was blood on it and it's wooden, so you cannot just clean it off easily. Oh well, wait, did we? Miss Page is here? We did. No. It's just... Ah, okay, I see. This is the quest with the occult hands that we didn't follow through either. I need to figure out the meaning of the cipher Ferenc wrote in the scriptorium. He used a volvel while writing it and took it with him. He can't keep it in his robes all the time, can he? In Ferenc's house I discovered the volvel he was holding when he deciphered the manuscript. I can use this to figure out the cipher he left. I figured out Ferenc's cipher. It says, Hi Gerhard. Latin for here lies Gerhard. I should check Brother Gerhard's grave in the cemetery. Prior Ferenc has been acting strangely since the Baron arrived. I should talk to him to find out if there was something going on between them. He usually is He's usually in the scriptorium, the abbot's house or the prior's house. I found a letter in the baron's belongings. It was from prior Ferenc. In it Ferenc said he would not perform a ritual for the baron, even if the baron threatened to turn him in to inquisitors in Innsbruck. I asked Ferenc if he knew anything about the baron's death. He was defensive and evasive. I found the burnt remnants of a note in prior Ferenc's house. It's unclear what the contents of the note were, but it was written in a purple ink with exceptionally fine lettering. There was a piece of paper on Ferenc's desk that had the imprint of a letter on it. I rubbed charcoal on the paper to reveal the text, which was a letter from Ferenc to the Baron. It appears Ferenc said he would not perform a ritual for the Baron, even if the Baron's Baron threatened to turn him into inquisitors in Innsbruck, and we already found the letter anyways. I discovered a silver rod with occult symbols on it and, traced, and traces of dried blood in the engravings. I believe it may belong to Prior Ferenc. But I do not think this is the murder weapon. 
because we are looking for a blunt weapon. Brother Gerhard's grave looks like it has been disturbed recently. Wait. This should be prior to that. I should ask Father Gernot for permission to dig the grave up. I suppose I could ask Brother Folkbert to dig it up without the abbot's permission, but he might get in trouble. Maybe I could even tempt Otto Zimmermann into helping me. We found that after digging up the grave. Father Gernot did not give him permission to dig up Brother Gerhard's grave. I may need to convince Brother Folkbert to help me or Otto Zimmermann. In Brother Gerhard's grave, I found a number of magical tools. It appears Prior Ferenc hid them here out of fear that they might be discovered. The note he wrote must have been a message for a fo fellow magician to dig them up at a later date. And then we tried to confront Ferenc, but that didn't work out well for us. He didn't tell us anything. The Baron the Nun. I was able to find an entrance to the library through the crypt beneath the abbey. A false re relief opened a door that revealed a stairway leading up to the floor of the library. Now I just have to go inside after the nuns have left. Mother Cecilia reacted poorly to the Baron's appearance at the abbey. Could she have something to do with this murder? I should find out what their history is. She's usually in the Prioress's house in the convent. After talking to Mother Cecilia, it seems unlikely that she would have killed the Baron. Even so, she may be protecting someone else. She said that the Baron heard one of the sisters years ago. There may be records on her in the library. I need to search the library to find out if there are any records on the nun whom Baron Rotvogel harmed. I would have to sneak in after the nuns have left for the day at Compline. I just need to find a way in. I decided to risk entering the library to search through the records of the sisters. There must be some clue here about which sister was harmed during Lawrence Rotfogel's last visit. Near the top of the library I found a record of admissions for the nuns. There was a note about Sister Matilda staying at a hermitage for several months after Baron Rotfogel's last visit. I should ask Mother Cecilia or Sister Matilda about this. Mother Cecilia acknowledged that Sister Matilda was the nun who Lawrence Rotfogel heard on his last visit. He tried to seduce her. When she rejected his advances, he beat her. Mother Cecilia had her taken to a hermitage to recover and to avoid a scandal. I need to decide what to do with this information. And also Matilda told us willingly. But uh, again, I don't think she murdered him. And the shovel that we found isn't the murder weapon either, because it also doesn't fit the wound, in my opinion. I found a shovel that Sister Matilda uses in the garden. There's blood on it. I should probably ask her about it. Yeah, so this isn't blunt either. Sister Matilda claimed that her shovel has blood on it because she uses it to kill rabbits in the convent garden. I should ask Sister Matilda about her stay at the hermitage following Baron Rotfogel's last visit. It can't, be a ch it can't be just a coincidence. I think she works in the convent garden during the day. Sister Matilda told me that the Baron... Oops. That the Baron asked her during his last visit. Her injuries were so severe that Mother Cecilia had her removed to a hermitage to avoid a scandal. She denied being responsible for the Baron's death. Of course she does. So, all the others are just... Uh, not connected to the murder. I mean, between Baron and the Abbot. I mean, the Abbot would also have reasons to kill the Baron. <laughs> the flood. What people have a problem with the Baron. And then, yeah, from town, Lucky Steinauer, um, the widow Camperin, and uh, yeah, have also motive. But we don't know Steinauer's motive at all. Yeah. And at the spinning bee, nothing really. Then the spinning bee, I gained some clarity on the various tensions in town, including that Martin Bauer is a known thief 
Though the women agreed he likely doesn't have the temperament for murder. Yeah, and I think he might have stolen those rings to sell them, but uh, it doesn't make sense for him to steal the book. Only if he thought that it was would be valuable. Uh, and yeah, maybe it is, why not? And I don't think he murdered the Baron either. And there are new people. Richard Schaff, executioner, employed by Jacob Esler to assist in the investigation of the murder of Lauren Soldvogel. Oh yeah, right. And uh, Sister Sophie of Birgitz, a quiet, dutiful kitchener for the nuns of Kirsau Abbey. Dang. So, I think the only clue we have is that either Sister Stena or um, Sister Illuminata wrote the notes. So, they wrote notes to Matilda, to Ferenc and to the Baron to meet in the chapter house, right? That's where he was murdered. Was it the chapter house? I think so, yeah. And... So somebody... And, and there was even a time, right? So somebody... brought them all together there, but we do not know if they actually went there. So the Baron went there because he died there, obviously. But who else? Brother Ferenc could have, because he burned his note. But I don't think that Matilda went there. She would have been scared too, I mean, to meet him there at night. Although she didn't know that he would be there, but I mean, the note implied so. Hmm. Then there was somebody at night at the nun's sleeping quarters because uh, Marguerite, the blind nun, smelled that somebody foreign or somebody with an unusual smell has been in there and she thought it would be the devil. But uh, I think it was either the Baron, when he was still alive, or somebody else who put the note there. But if it was Sister Illuminata, she would have smelled familiar, right? So I don't think it was the one who put the note there, because I think it was Sister Illuminata. Or Stena, I don't know. Oh, Rüdiger is here. Oh, Nobody's talking to me. Do you talk to me? Nope. <sighs> That's horrible. What I think I'm going to try, if it's possible, is to not accuse anybody per name. Wait, what? Oh, they are all waiting to be interrogated. Oh, dang. Can we talk to them? That's crazy. Marguerite is here. Gertrude is here. Hedy, of course. Veronica. Oh, that's crazy. Can we talk to Voislav? He's here. Why is no one talking to me? <laughs> That's so frustrating. So yeah, I'll try not to accuse anybody because we don't have actual proof. If that's possible, I hope it is. Oh man, I'm so nervous. I don't want anybody to die. Is scared not. Andreas. Father Gernot. 
Master Marler, if you think I'm unaware of your actions around this abbey in the past few days, you're mistaken. Oh? <laughs> I don't really care what you're aware of. You exhumed the corpse of one of the brothers of this abbey. I should have expected that our Otto Zimmermann would help you with such a ghoulish task. <laughs> we don't say anything. He'll pay for his role in this obscenity in due time. Now then, for all your meddling, you will not be welcome in Kirsau after your commission is completed. Yeah, we, I mean, that's true. We didn't do that out of spite or something. I apologize, I was only trying to help Brother Piero. It's too late for apologies. Your days of interfering in the daily life of this abbey will end. It was never my intent to interfere, Father Abbot. I think we don't need to make him even more angry. Uh, I leave you to the Archdeacon now. Try not to preture yourself. God save you, Andreas Mahler. Oh, God doesn't need to save me. I'm just fine. We need to save Piero. Is that the Archdeacon? No. That's the Archdeacon. Please state your name for our records. We are still a journeyman. Andreas Mahler, journeyman, artist from Nuremberg. What is an artist doing in Kirsau Abbey? The Abbey still has some commissions from wealthy patrons, and I need the money before I return to Nuremberg. Arnold, please write that down. I think we are ready to begin. Of course, your reverence. Now then, Master Mahler, what was your relation to Lorenz, the Baron Nordvogel? I only knew him for a day, but we were on friendly terms. Do you feel you had a sense of him as a person? Hmm. I think I had, but um, my sense was pretty wrong, right? But he only asks if we feel if he had. So, let's say yes? How would you characterize him? Yeah, confident, overbearing, used to getting what he wants. I mean, both is true. If we choose that, will we offend him too? <laughs> A nobleman for all the good and ill that goes along with the title. I think I choose that. I mean, we found out that he isn't a fine man. Yeah, confident, overbearing, used to getting what he wants. Do you think someone would kill him for that? That seems unlikely. Someone had to have a reason. If not that, something else. Otherwise, it makes my presence here somewhat difficult to explain. The Baron Rotvogel was murdered here, in this very room. Someone did it. Father Gernot believes it was one of his monks, Brother Piero. 
I have met with P Brother Piero and questioned him at length. While it seems unlikely that a man of his age and temperament could murder the Baron, he was discovered in flagrante delicto. The Baron was already dead. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Should we just say that? Why not? If we can influence the conversation, we should, right? Stop talking! But, but you... I, okay. Thanks. If you wish to advocate on behalf of Brother Piero, I suggest shutting your mouth until I ask you a question. Oh, okay. Piero had reasons to resent the Baron. The loss of his work, the insistence on discussing the writings of the troublemaker from Wittenberg. And as for his age and infirmity, I myself have read of many cases in which a man of modest strength succumbs to the temptations of the devil. When seized by a devilish fever, the poor sinner gains an infernal power that allows him to inflict grievous wounds, sometimes fatal. It's called adrenaline and has nothing to do with the devil. <laughs> What I am saying is that in spite of the curious circumstances, Brother Piero is the most plausible perpetrator of this most vile act. I understand that you are on friendly terms with Brother Piero. You also interacted with the Baron both in town and the Abbey. Did you witness anything that suggests someone else could have murdered Baron Rotvogel? Here we go. Uh, we have to name everybody. That's that's not cool. If we just say that Lucky argued with the Baron, we didn't accuse him, and this is also like he only acted or behaved suspiciously. He won't believe me anyways. I'm right. If he questions Ferenc and Ferenc says otherwise he will believe him and not me because they are of the same club <laughs> I'm the outsider here dang it can we accuse all of them or only one I don't think Ferenc killed him to be honest at least not with the weapon that we found I already said that I mean, it's just saying that they argued, okay? So <laughs> I didn't accuse anybody yet. Who is Lucky Steinauer? I don't believe his name has come up during our questioning. The town stonemason. All oh, right. What's the connection between the town stonemason and a nobleman from Worms? I and at least three farmers in the village saw Lucky arguing with the Baron when he came to town. About what? I don't know, but the argument was heated. Hedy and Veronica Bowerin witnessed it. You mentioned a third witness? Yes, Martin Bauer. Unfortunately, yes, the boy fled. Still, we will question the woman about what they saw. And how do you propose that this stonemason killed the Baron? I don't propose that he did. But yeah, he's a stonemason. Lucky would have access to any number of tools that he could use to uh, bludgeon, to butch, to bludgeon the Baron. But uh, I'm not accusing him. Have you found such a tool? No, but that does not mean it does not exist. And as they are Lucky's tools, only he would know if one went missing. Fair point, Master Mahler, but the fact remains it has yet to be found. True. In any case, that is the extent of my knowledge about Lucky Steinauer, your reverence. Is there anyone else you can think of who may have wanted to harm the Baron?
The abbot's prior Ferenc was behaving suspiciously the day of the baron's arrival. He may have had a motive. That is an extraordinary claim, Andreas. Yeah, that's what I thought. He will never believe me. The abbot speaks highly of the prior, and he oversees both your and brother Piero's work, does he not? Um, yes, your reverence. But prior Ferenc's role in the scriptorium has little bearing on his motive. An extraordinary claim requires extraordinary evidence for me to take it seriously. Why should I take the word of an artist over a respected officer of this abbey? I can provide evidence of prior Ferenc's motive. Please do so. Dang it. This is really bad. On the day that the Baron arrived, I secretly observed Prior Ferens in the scriptorium. Baron Rotfogel and Prior Ferens were exchanging letters about performing a magical ritual during the Baron's visit. That is so bad. He'll get into really bad trouble if I say that. And even if he didn't murder the Baron, he will burn for that. And I don't want him to, because it's stupid. But if I don't come up with evidence, they'll burn Piero, who also isn't guilty. That's so horrible. If I just say that, he won't believe me. I mean, if I can somehow follow up with that Ferenc refused profoundly, which is also in the letter, then maybe he wouldn't get burned for reading magical books. This is such a stupid concept. Oh, I have to. You have proof of this? Let's give him only the imprint, and not the letter. Although we got the letter legally from his wife, so that's better. For this we snuck into his house. In it, the prior mentions that he will not perform a ritual for the Baron, even if the Baron does follow through on a threat to implicate him to inquisitors in Innsbruck. An implication of necromancy is a serious matter. The Briar's position would have been in peril, possibly even his life. And how do you believe Briar Ferens would have killed the Baron? I pray you will not say it was a magical ritual. Nah, I'm not certain, your reverence. Ah, a troublesome wrinkle. Is there anything else to say about the Briar? No. Very well. Who else may have wanted to see the Baron dead? I can think of no one else who could have caused to harm the Baron, your reverence. Very well. Are you aware of anything else that might shed some light on this case? Has Brother Florian told you about the note he found in the Baron's clothing? Yes, Brother Florian explained how he came to find it and told me its contents. Master Adeljäger has entered his testimony in our register. I don't understand the implications. Who is the innocent? It's not clear to me either, your reverence. Do you believe the murderer wrote it? Whoever wrote it was a talented scribe. I understand Kirsa has two, the elderly brother Adok and the younger brother Guy. Nah, they... no, 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 it's not them. 
To be frank, your reverence, neither man has the skill to write in this way. There's something else about it, too. The style is just <clears throat> different. It's unlike Adok and Guy's writing, unlike mine. Something about the way the first and second strokes meet on the A and G. Yes, well, whatever the particulars, it seems it will remain a mystery that stands apart from the commission of the murder. Unfortunately, there's more to tell. I found more notes. Notes written in the same hand, on the same type of parchment, to those who had a motive to kill the Baron. But that is deeply troubling, but again, beyond the bounds of my investigation. In any case, I thank you for bring it, bringing it to my attention. Of course, your reverence. Thank you again for your time, Master Mahler. Would it, would it be impertinent of me to opine on who is the killer? No, I mean we can't even. Of course, your reverence. I don't actually know if that went well or not. I mean, it didn't, right? Because we had no evidence whatsoever and couldn't accuse anybody. That's pretty bad. But we'll see what will happen in the next episode. Uh, thank you so, so much for watching it. Have a wonderful and adventurous day and goodbye.